The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. Jason's uh, got the message. Jason, you want to come up? Let's pray for him as he comes up. Father, right now, actually, God started with him. And I had to, I was so excited for a couple weeks, and he kept saying, you get it, Dad? Did you get it yet? Did you get it? But, you know, after two weeks, I started getting an attitude, and then I had to repent of that attitude. Because it was like, oh, no, I didn't get it yet. Leave me alone. Don't ever develop that attitude because God will make you repent of that attitude before you get anything. <laughs> attitude determines performance. So, watch your attitude. Jason? <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> well, it's been a it's been a really um, interesting last few weeks uh, for us as a family um, pers- personally, and for a lot of you guys out there too. I know. Um, I notice some. I don't know how many people in here know my testimony and and Gwen's testimony and what have you, but um, one of the things that I, I keep I keep hearing over and over again is God always makes a way out. When you feel stuck in a situation, it's it's an it's a lie from the enemy. You're not stuck. God always provides a way and a means to get through whatever you're going through. Um, another another way that he he says it is that uh, um, he doesn't tempt a man further than what he can handle, basically. Um, but he always gives a, an escape route. I don't know why I, I, I started with that, but what's really interesting is I know that the Lord works um, in really awesome ways. A lot of times we don't understand how he works and how he's going to do it or even why. And that's uh, one of my biggest issues that I have in myself personally is I, I constantly want to figure out why first before I do anything. And sometimes he just wants us to do it. And we might not ever actually know the reason why. And pretty much that's the whole reason I'm still up here today because I have... I think, it's a, I think it, it, it possibly could be that he just wants to you know keep me humble, which is... It's fine with me, <laughs> but I, I came, I came up here today. I came actually all the way from this morning. Uh, I woke up early to to try to to hash out some notes and things, and I, I wasn't here. <laughs> I was like, Lord, I don't know what. There's a lot of good stuff in the scriptures I could speak about, <laughs> but what is it exactly for this congregation for this time? That you know, do you want? Just in case, do you want me to to speak about to to the congregation, to your congregation, Lord and um, the only thing that I, I really heard was that, that one thing is that there's always a way out. And I don't know who that's for, if that's specifically for everybody or, or specifically for one individual or two. Um, but the other thing was, is he wanted me, he wants me to read first Corinthians 10 and I don't know why, but I'm going to have, I'm going to do it because, um, he wants me to, uh, and I, and I, and I love him, so. Um, but you, you, you have to know this too. The, the behind the scenes is I, I despise reading from verbatim, word for word, things to a crowd of people. It's one of those things that I, I had to pray through. <laughs> and I don't, it's just like, <clears throat> so of course God would want me to do that this morning for you guys. Because I got to deal with these things. Otherwise, what good is it to you guys, right? 
and that's the only re that's one of the only reasons that I that that as as ministers of the gospel leaders in this church do things because if it was up to us to, to feed ourselves, you know, just, you know, then I, I could have stayed at home and preached to myself in the mirror. But it's not. And the things that we go through are not for you. They're for you to get through so that you could help somebody else get out. And, and so our sufferings that they, you know, the, those things that we call, call it all joy when you fall into trials and tribulations and all these sufferings that we, those are, those are for a purpose. And we never want to forget that purpose because then we'll fall into complaining and criticism and comparison and all those deadly seas. If we don't realize that the reason that our, we have any sufferings is for, so that we can release or reduce the suffering for you guys. So anyway, Before, before I get into to reading, how many of you know that you don't ask the purpose of a thing what its purpose is? You actually, and we've heard this from the pulpit. I think, I think my dad used the, the VCR scenario, but a lot of people don't even know what VCRs are anymore. So I could say Blu-ray player or, you know, MP3 player. Um, if it's not working, or you don't know what it is, and it's sitting on your counter, you don't know what its purpose is, you don't ask it what, it's, what, what is your purpose. It's not going to say anything. It doesn't understand. It doesn't know. But so you consult the manual who was made by the manufacturer, or you actually consult the, the manufacturer themselves. And, it's, and you know what I'm getting at is when we, when we don't real, realize our own purpose, we don't actually, we, we need to be able to go to the scriptures and see what our purpose is. We need to go, which is our manual, and we need to go to God the Father and have that relationship. So we need, we need the word, and without relationship with him, seeing, being able to see him face to face in his, in his word, we don't actually realize our, not only our purpose, but our potential. And the thing is, is back when this started, I don't know where this is going, so I, I'm just hold on to your seats. Back when all of this started, I, I, it started with one message: the kingdom within. And and many of you probably over the years have heard messages about kingdom within, and its righteousness, peace, and joy, and you know, all these things were were given to us. But my question all it started when I was sick one day, and I said, "Why am I sick?" Why are people, and then, and then it got bigger, why are people sick? Why are we not seeing healings and miracles and raising of the dead so much here in the American church, in the body of Christ at all? How come, you know, there's a lot of preachers and ministers out there that don't have the funding to actually reach the people that they need to reach? How come, they don't, you know, all of these different little childlike questions I came to, go to the Lord with when I was feeling, feeling really sick. I had the flu or, for a few days and I was like, felt like I was dying. And one of the things is, is that we don't realize our potential. The potential of us are, as, as a believer, as a son or daughter of the Lord, of, of Him, is that we could do works and even better than what Jesus showed us in the scriptures. Our, that's our potential. What, the problem with a, a potential is if you don't utilize it, then you don't, it never comes to pass. We have all of this potential. We need to realize that it's there, first of all. Because a lot of us have sit back and said, "Oh, that's for the olden days. That's for the times when the you know before the apostles passed away." And, you know, and, and, the, and the, we are in the New Testament. This is the time. We are His church. We are His people. We are the believers, and the believers shall be able to move in these things, and they will. But we need to realize our potential. 
one of the things that it, it, it needs to be able to motivate us that we actually have the potential in the first place. Because like I said, a lot of people don't even think that these things are possible because they haven't seen it in our time. Or they haven't seen it, you know, some of you have seen healings and, and physical things and, and whatnot and, uh, and immediately, or experienced them yourselves. I have. I have no more allergies. I, ha I mean, these things have gone instantly. I've had my back healed, like, instantly one, one time when I couldn't even stand up straight. And then all of a sudden I felt the power of the Lord. Boom, and I was able to, it was, it was great. I've experienced these things. And they've, and, and those things, and it's like, so I don't have, um, and a, you know, in theory, I don't say that the Lord does these things, but I know because those things happen to me. Some of you haven't experienced those things or seen them, but please do not become unmotivated to find and seek these things out because they're there in the scriptures and they wouldn't be there in the scriptures if it wasn't possible for you, if it wasn't possible for us. The other thing that the Lord was speaking to me this week was the fact that a lot of the things that we were, you know, that we started out with, a lot of them, it, it made us feel like we are, well, it was explained to us in a really beautiful way how unique and, and wonderful we are, each individual person, that the way that Christ made us and how we are each unique and individual in his expression through us. And we're definitely necessary to him right? We are also completely necessary for each other. We are called into one body. So each individual person is a unique part of the body who has a unique expression all to them, all to their own, and is not you cannot divide that. And the thing that brings division in is, is basically it's sin. It's known sin. But the thing is, is if, the, and, and, it, and it goes down to the covetousness, the, it goes down to all the seas. Idolatry, which is covetousness. It brings division and we can't be divided. A house divided falls. And one of the biggest things that the enemy ever, ever uses, he knows that in, in war, uh, you divide and conquer. Right? So the biggest thing for me was to understand this week that not only are we individual expressions, but we are so uniquely bonded together in the spirit that we are one expression. Just like all the children of Israel were, were, were each individual people, they're all individual people. But God saw them as one, one blessed nation, one blessed people. And so when he looks at our congregation, even, or, or, you know, even uh, the, the body of Christ is at large, but just our, speaking to our congregation, he sees one. And how many times, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I, I'd like further you know, further explanation, because I, I want to know how to, how to experience this oneness. And he was like, he told me, he's like, well, did you ever stub your toe? Doesn't your entire body feel that stub toe? They de it deals with the pain of that one member, that part of your body. In essence, if I get, so just, just maybe this couple of weeks ago, my, my socks were totally falling apart. And this is not, this is kind of a sidestep, but, but they're like, it's, they're like years old and I, and I don't like buying new stuff all the time. So, uh, you'll see that cause I wear the same shirts over and over again in church, but I, you know, I pull up my sock and like the whole top part of the sock rips off. I'm like, it's time to get some new socks. Okay. I'm not, make, I'm not saying that so you guys feel bad. I'm just saying because I, I just don't like buying stuff. Anyway, not that kind of stuff. I like technology. You, know, you see, you know, iPads and stuff. Socks, like, whatever. Nobody sees them anyway. Um, but so when they start falling apart, it's just like jeans. When they start falling apart, you've got to get a new pair. 
And I was like, so you get a new pair of socks. And I'm like, wow, you know, these, these are, you know, I got several new pairs. One laughed at me. I got like 48 pairs of socks. Because I don't buy them and I don't like to buy things. So, But they're, they're brand new and it's like, it's just like buying a, bar, a brand new pair of shoes or something. It's like you, you, you don't have them, maybe not so much the ladies. Ladies have to break in their shoes, I guess. But like a new pair of tennis shoes that are nice and cushiony and soft, it benefits your whole body. Yeah? So it's the same, it's the same thing. One person... This, this, this might sound harsh, but one person that is in known sin, that is continuing in their sin, one person that is in adultery with, you know, against their wife and doesn't plan on getting out of it will bring pain to this entire congregation. Whether it's known to us or not. The children of Israel, when, when there was sin in the camp, God didn't say there was one person that sinned. He said, they have sinned against me. Right? The good thing is, is there's Phineas's. <laughs> who, who knows Phineas? Eesh. He decided to take it upon himself to, to clear, clear the name <laughs> for the people and threw a spear through the people that were involved in the yeah interesting story huh he's my hero <laughs> justice <laughs> justice button but it was god it was god's hero he took care of it you know i don't even know why i'm going through this but you know when we when we when we say there's a there's a scripture when um, I think it's, I don't even remember where it's at, but when Paul says that, you know, you get, there, there's some of you are sick and dying among you because of you partake, you partook in the, it, it's, in, I believe it's in Corinthians somewhere. If it's in 1 Corinthians 10, I'm going to be blown away. But anyway, uh, because it was the Lord, it was the Lord's Supper and the, and what he was saying was against the people that were taking it. Weren't recognizing, weren't recognizing him. Weren't honoring the body of Christ. Weren't they? Weren't honoring. They were becoming drunk or whatever they were doing. They didn't care. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. They desired themselves. And so he gave them a rebuke. But you know what? It was some. You know, it was it was those people that 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 messed up. That attitude. It came down not just to them. The, 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 the judgment of God came against many became sick and, and died because of some of the people that were screwing up. If you are in known sin, that does not mean that you fall and you failed to, you know, in your temptation-wise. Temptation is not sin in and of itself. Everybody was tempted. Jesus was tempted. But if you're continuously go, giving in to the same temptation over and over again, and you're not, you don't have any godly sorrow, you know it's wrong, you still consider yourself a believer, you profess to be a believer, but your conscience is so seared that it's, it just becomes an okay thing to do. Pornography, maybe? Repent for us, even. Repent now for, for, your, you know, for yourself. But if you don't plan on ever getting out of it, and then you say some of us are, are sick and we're not seeing healings, we're not, we're not doing it. It could be we bring in judgment against our whole, the whole congregation, let alone the body of Christ. We don't see that power because we ourselves aren't ready to give over to all the stuff that we desire. You know, I just stare at this jelly donut for a half an hour. I gave that jelly donut a really large amount of my time. Well, I gave it power. You know, you give power to what you, you give attention to. How come you're not giving attention to your first love? 
Are you going to let the desires of your flesh overrule the desire for God? These are hard things, and I don't, I'm not beating the sheep. I'm just saying, please, deal with your stuff. And I said it at the beginning of all of this that started happening. I said, God has given a special grace for this period of time to deal before it's too late for you. You know what happens? If it's not me, it'll be somebody else in a place of authority. It'll be a Phineas that rises up and takes care of the issue. Now, we want, we're not going to spear you through. But we're obligated, if we, if, if we know and God tells us to, we're obligated. If you see somebody walking off a cliff, to tell them, hey, you're walking off a cliff. You're obligated to. You don't have to pray about that. If somebody is going against the word of God, you don't have to pray and see God what he would want, whether you should talk to them or not. Their blood would be on your hands. Now, if there's somebody in the congregation and we talk to you and you don't feel like changing or you don't want to deal, and you think you have a better idea or you think it's just too hard, at least repent. Try. When, when you have no godly sorrow, you're in big trouble. But it, 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 you could fall into the same temptations over and over again. But if you have godly sorrow, every single time the Christian, we rise up. We get up. We fall. We get up. We fall. We get up. There's a difference between unrepentant sin, known sin, and falling to temptation every once in a while. Even if it's the same thing. If you have no godly sorrow, it's a heart matter. Anyway, I'm just saying, at the beginning of all of this, it was a repentance thing. And it was in a, in, a, in a divine ability that he gave us to deal with some of the stuff that our root issues are things that we need to deal with ahead of time. Because he wants his glory to come. And he can't do it with sin in his body. And, there, and then what, what happened then is what is naturally happening now is now there's more of a holiness building up, right? And then the whole the whole series on on how to be an overcomer, but it's the result of holiness. And without it, you know, it it's just it's like you could see the steps it's taking. I told you all at the beginning what was going to happen. Clean up your stuff. What's this going to happen? And then when once the holiness stuff starts coming in, people are going to get really uncomfortable. It's going to be an exciting, loving, awesome time in the beginning because God is good and he loves us. And if with, without that, without the revelation of his love for us, we don't have anything to work for. We don't have, we don't know what our potential is. So with that, the love of Christ in us and that revelation that he gave us at the beginning, we want to press through. We want to stand firm. We want to keep going. We want to stand up when we've fallen. I want to go ahead and read the, the 1 Corinthians 10. For I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, that our forefathers were all under the protected, <clears throat> they were all protected by the cloud in which God's presence went before them. And every one of them passed safely through the Red Sea. Just in that first verse, I'm going to stop there for a second. What's really neat about this, this period of time, and we shared it a little bit at, at one of the, the, the meetings, um, Gwen was seeing what, during this time, it felt like, prophetically, she was, was seeing, uh, standing at a shoreline, and the waters were receding. Now, we've had all these prophecies that the waters were arising, and that we were getting into the river, and that we were doing all these things, but now it's like, she said, the waters are like receding, and they're just being pulled back, and we're standing here in, in the dry beach. And immediately God spoke to me 
And I said that this isn't the, the, the passing of the glory of God. This isn't like, what, what's happening is, it's a strategy. And the thing is, is we need to be able to, to stand our ground. This is the time to stand. Stand firm in what God's spoken to you. Dig your feet in and prepare yourself. Because what happens, what happens when, you, when there's a tidal wave? Or, you know, something even worse, you know, is that you see the sea receding for, you know, a long time. And then all of a sudden, boom. And when, when the Lord, when, when she was speaking that, what I was seeing was not only, I was, I was seeing this verse in, in, in reference to them parting, the, Moses parting the Red Sea and them walking through on dry land. And I said, this is a strategy for the, the Lord is using this. And though the time may be feel dry, it might be, maybe it's including some harsh times in your family, some things that would be trying to, to drag you down, to, to push you down, to tire you, or maybe even an ailment that is wearying to you, that's causing you to be grumpy. That this time is time to dig down and remember the blessings that, that, that God has, has given to us and that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we, we have all kinds of promises attached to that. Wonderful, awesome things. This is the time to recall those things. And stand firm. Because of what's coming. It's not, it's not the devil. It's a strategy of the Lord. And the thing is, 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 you know, when the waters recede and all that stuff comes up, <laughs> you see all this junk and the garbage that you didn't see before. It's time to deal with that stuff. The, the strategy of the Lord, even when, when he was showing me, was when we were walking through, just like the Israelites did, and we're, we're standing on the ground that God provided for us that's dry, that used to be a sea in, in front of them, was the fact that he's pulling that stuff away so we could deal with the garbage in front of us. Keep moving forward, but it's, it's to wipe out the enemy entirely. The, the, when, you know, the, the horse and the rider are thrown into the sea, it's because he has a strategy. We have to wait it out. We need to be patient and persevere through this junk. If anything comes up, just take, a little, just, just take it as, this is something I'm experiencing because God has showed it to me. Lord, how do you want me to deal with it? And move on. Don't sit and dwell on it forever. Don't let it get you down. But stand firm in what he's, he's already told us and continue on because God is a good God and he wants the best for us. And he is not a man that he should lie to us. And he has always given us a way out. And not only if we go and we, we go in his will and his timing and his direction, we're, we're, we're protected, we're covered. We can run to him. He's, he's our strong tower. He, if we are in his will, we are completely surrounded by his protection. You know that there was like no, during that time in, in, in First Kings and the scriptures, there was no, all the way from, from the northern part of Israel to the southern part, there was no lack. Every single house had a, had a garden, it said. Every, everybody. There was nobody on government funding. There was no lack. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no lack of funds. This is possible. This is possible now. And if, and if you would at least know that it's possible, that there might be some inclination of inspiration inside you to keep moving. Stay in God's will. As soon as we creep out of God's will, the enemy can dis, dis pulverize us because of that division. He doesn't, we're first to go. We get first to attack. We get first outside of that covering. But if we remain in his will, no coveting, no, no competing, 
No looking on the other side of the fence, guys, because the grass is not greener. It's only because you haven't watered your side of the fence. <laughs> Amen? But if we don't know our, our potential, then we, we, we end up doing the wrong things and going the wrong ways. And that's why it's so important to actually see what, what God says about us in the scriptures. It's funny, when you, when you utilize things, I mean, if you have a toaster, well, let's say, let's, let's do it this way. I'm going to say one, I'm going to tell you one of the stories that I'm not real proud about, but my first car, when it, it was just, it was called a Plymouth Turismo. There was only like six of them ever made, probably. <laughs> Nobody's ever heard that name before. Turismo. Anyway, so it's kind of like a hatchback. I don't know. It was, it was a little sporty looking, but it, yeah, whatever. And it, I had an issue with it, though, in the wintertime. The wintertime, the doors would freeze open. <laughs> they would never latch. They would never latch. They would never, yeah. So anyway, so I got the bright idea one time and uh, that I would, I would use bungee cords to tie the, you know, shut the, get the door shut. Well, I was kind of using the bungee cords for not really what their purpose was for, obviously. <laughs> if they, <laughs> otherwise, they might have worked better. Um, so I strung it around the, the, the handle of one side and all the way across the other side, and I strung it on the handle of the door on the other side. How many of you know that, that if you don't use the purpose... You know, if you're using something that's not necessarily the purpose of the thing, <laughs> it doesn't work out. Well, anyway, so I'm driving home from work one day, and it was really, really cold. So I made sure I was all hooked up, <laughs> you know, bungee cords across my chest all the way to the other door. <laughs> had, my, had my zipper down because it was, it was, you know, I had the heat on for a while. And I, and I was, was peeling around the corner from this uh, little restaurant that we had off the street. And... And I turned a little bit too quick, and the door flung open oh, no. on my side. Oh, no. <laughs> well, see, what happened was, is this is, the thing is, is like, what happened was, is like, when you don't use the thing for, you know, that it's purposed for, you, you get, <laughs> anyway, so I went, to, I went to grab the door, it slammed shut on my fingers, it knocked the hooks off the other door, right? And I didn't have my seatbelt on. Well, anyway, what happened was is I, I turned the corner and I kept turning and, and the door flung open, slammed shut, smashed my fingers, knocked the hooks off the other door. Those flew and hit me in the rib cage. And then the door opened on this side again and when I went to grab it, <laughs> I fell out. <laughs> and rolled into the snow into the gutter and my car just nicely went and gracefully parked itself in the back parking lot of this restaurant without hurting anybody so I was like oh man I just laid there and stared up at the sky laughing hysterically because it was like I <laughs> that just happened But see, that's what happens when you don't use a thing, when you don't know the exact purpose of that thing is going to work out in the situation. <laughs> oh. And if only I had somebody to speak into my life that was sitting in the passenger side. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have listened to him. But the thing is, is when... <laughs> I don't know why the Lord's telling me this. I used to have, I had, I had a friend. And the, and the whole reason that this sounds a little bit, a little bit harsh sounding, that basically this, this whole thing that the Lord was telling me today to talk about was that basically sin in the camp, a little leaven goes through the whole loaf, right? 
And I'm not saying that to make everybody feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going through all this sickness and health issues and I'm going, you know, this person is dying and this is because of that person's sin. No. I'm, be, I'm saying because the, I want you to see the, necess, the necessity of the fact that we are all one body. We are all called together to be one body and how much that we need to interact with each other to be able to tell us, you know, it says go to one another and, and, and share when you're having some issues and when you need prayer and then we will lay hands on you and get prayer. It builds you up. It doesn't, it's not just so that you can sit and complain around, you know, complain about stuff to each other. It was for a, a specific reason, is to build the unity of the body. Anyway, but the Lord is speaking to me about this too. I used to have a friend, and this is one of the reasons why I'm telling you guys these things is, that, that sound a little bit harsh, is because, just like I said earlier, if you see somebody walking off a cliff, you're going to tell them. You need to tell them, you're walking off a cliff, guy. And if they're blind, even more so. The thing is, is I used to have this buddy, and, and, and we grew up together. And, and, and the thing was, is he was he was in the gifted program. He was so smart, and I and I didn't envy him too much because I thought, oh my gosh, if he's like the smartest kid in in the school, I don't I don't want to be that because <laughs> he had no common sense. But he could he could he was reading Moby Dick. He read Moby Dick before he went in the kindergarten. He, he, what? You know, what, what mother would do that to a kid? But anyway. So he was really intelligent, had a very extremely high IQ. But, and, and we would do awesome stuff together. I mean, we were, we were, we were like, like Bo and Luke Duke from the Dukes of Hazard. I don't know, I'm dating myself now. But, you know, and, we would do all kinds of crazy stuff. We'd build forts and we'd, we'd you know, dig holes and bury things and I don't know. We did all kinds of awesome stuff. We spent most every day together. And um, A lot of times when we had these really awesome ideas, he wouldn't, he wouldn't listen to me because he was, this, he was smart. I mean, this kid was just like, he, he could calculate everything the way that things, just by looking at something. So we would, we would we want to make a bike ramp, okay? So we dug this giant hole in the, in, the, in the mud trail, and we built up this big bike ra uh, ramp for our dirt bikes, and we had it filled with stones and everything, so it was really solid. And I was looking at it and thinking, looking at his bike, and, and I remember how heavy his bike was and everything, and I was just like, I just don't think this is going to work out. And so as the story progressed, <laughs> I told him, I thought, you know, I, I don't think this is going to work out. Ah, da, da. He never listened to me, ever, because he always had it figured out, and thought he did. So he took, you know, from what us as little kids, you know, eight and seven years old or whatever it was, eight and nine, um, we went from like a mile away and started riding our bikes, and, I, and, and he went way past me, and he was just like this really skinny kid. And so you could see his knees going up by his ears. <laughs> yeah, he was going so fast. And I was like, oh, my Lord, he's going to totally crash. And so I stopped because we were kind of racing, and he got way ahead of me. And I was like, I don't remember him ever being able to lift his front wheel at all because it was a heavy, it was a really heavy bike he had. And I was like, I, this is not going to be. And so he hits the ramp full force, like boom, both tires. And the front tire goes immediately, like split second, down into the hole that we dug. And he flips over his handlebars and flies in the air for, I want to say, five or six feet into a tree. So he, <laughs> no, so mind you, he's upside down, flying through the air like this. And he goes, boom, and he hits a tree and then slides down onto his neck. I was like, no! <laughs> I run and I thought he died. <laughs> and he, he was fine. I, I went over to him. I was like, you know, he wasn't even knocked unconscious, which is crazy. I, I thought he would have been 
I thought he was dead because the way his neck went and everything. <laughs> but he never listened to me. <laughs> and it's not that I'm, I'm not telling you guys this is, this is a, as a warning, but it is kind of. It's scripture, but I want you to be able to remember this because I, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to beat you guys. I'm saying, please deal with stuff. Just deal with it. If, if you can't, then, then, then talk, make a prayer appointment. Talk to somebody. If you're honestly willing to do something about changing whatever it is that you know is wrong, then God will work with you. There's grace involved there, right? And grace is the empowerment to do and to be all that he's called you to do and to be. What's, what's really cool about grace is when you yield to the spirit of grace, the spirit, the, the spirit of holiness, which I really like that. You yield to the spirit of holiness. He gives you the grace to overcome. He'll actually do it for you. He, wants, he loves you so much that he will deal with it with you. He will deal with it for you. He will go out before you and take care of your enemies. This is awesome. God is awesome. When, and one of the other things that this is another circumstance that I had with with my friend that we had built a tree, um, a, a tree swing basically. We threw up a ni- we got a nice piece of rope and we threw it up over a dead branch that was hanging over. Okay, you have to understand where we slid where we did our sleds and where we hung out most of the time we called it the hollow and it was just. Uh, it was just a wooded area, but the 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 um, the hill the the hill was like over. It was like 90 degrees or, or into and it goes and it went right into the highway. There was a small part that wasn't there, and so we would slid we slid right on that because it was just fantastic, and we'd get hurt all the time. One of the times, well, this is just one one of the times we went down on the slide, and he got the bright idea to take his old, I believe it's a radio flyer type sled that had the, the, the metal rails and it was wood and took it down a 90 degree slope that had rocks and you know tree roots. <laughs> I went down first and I was like, I stopped near the end before I got to the freeway. <laughs> and all of a sudden, whew, I feel snow on my face. I look up and there's the bottom of this sled. <laughs> and it was like slow motion. And, I, and it, it never hit the hill, the hill underneath me. It just went all the way to the ravine and went boom and splintered into a thousand pieces <laughs> with him on top of it. Now, I didn't have a chance to warn him that that wasn't a good idea. But the time that we made a, we made a swing for the, on, the, on the tree, I thought this was, this was an opportunity I, you know, this, to, to, to really like be like Spider-Man or whatever we were thinking. I said, I could, I could go from all the way on this side of the mountain to all the way to the other side of the hill with this swing that we made. It's really awesome. I never, never crossed my mind to go straight out. That's just really boring. Well, anyway, so I, I, I take the first swing, and I'm, I try it out, and I'm you know, making sure that the, the string is going to hold me and everything. So I'm like hanging on it and pulling on it. And, and so I swing way out over the ravine, and it's like really cool. And I end up way on the other side of this the tree that we had. And and I and I was just holding on because we use a you know we cut off a broomstick and we use the handles for the for the handle. And I never crossed my mind to sit on that thing, but so I just used it as you know handlebars, and I just swung way out and over. And I'm like, ah, does, I thought that's what that was what we were doing, and so. My friend, he, he, he sits on this thing. He, he puts it up between his legs. He holds onto the rope. And he goes way clear up in the top of this hill. And I'm like, why is he going not, you know, from over here and just swinging out over? He's going way at the top of the hill. I don't understand. And he gets this running start. And I'm like, no, that's not going to work. That, don't do that. Because, you know, once that string, I'm thinking all these things and I can't say it fast enough. The string is going to get too, the branch is going to fall down, you know. Well, <laughs> so he, d- he just took off running. <laughs> Knees are up by his ears again. <laughs> smoke, you know, dirt, smoke flying everywhere. 
and he jumps right when right at the bottom where I was standing, and he jumps straight out, and and instead of like hanging, you know, so he he he, he gets all the way out in the mid air, mid air, and he's holding on for with both hands on the string, and I'm like, this is this is going be good, and he and he's still holding on to this string, and he goes all the way out. To the to, to I mean I couldn't imagine what he was seeing out there because we were so high up, and it went ping snap, and he went. <laughs> it was just I was like, what are you? Oh my God! And what was what was so fun? What was sad? It was really sad. But you know I was thinking, what was so funny about it was he remained holding on to the string, like it was gonna do something helpful. He's holding on to the string in midair with his feet straight out. It didn't even occur to him to, to like look down and go, oh my gosh. He just kept going like this, like it was a ride. And, and he's holding it all the way down and he hits, when he hits the side of the mountain or the side of the hill, he hits full force on his buttocks and legs. And he was going so fast I and mean, he kept going all the way. Just get it all the way down over all those rocks and all the twigs and gl probably broken glass and stuff. I, I mean, I, I didn't live in a rural area. It was a city. And gravel and all the way to the bottom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so when he, I was like, oh my gosh. And, and so I knew he was okay, though, because he stood up immediately and started, <laughs> and started running around in circles. And, I was, and so I knew his legs were okay and everything. And he was going, ah, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh. And when he, he went past, because I, I was running down there by the time to check and see if he was okay. By the time I got down there, he was going, ah, ah, ooh, ooh. And he turned around. And, he, and he, we were wearing, he was wearing jeans, and he had two huge holes. <laughs> one, in, one on each buttocks. <laughs> and there was, it was all red, and he had gravel stuck up in his skin. And he was going, ah, ah, ooh, ah. It was these two two flaps of. It was like it was like a cartoon. How many people though? How many how many people know that the Lord, the Lord does things for us for a reason, and when He removes stuff, when He acts like a surgeon in our lives, we have to be submitted to Him. You know, which brings me to the other thought of this story was the fact that. For about three blocks away, you could hear his mom scrubbing his wounds with the wire brush so that he could get the gravel out. But how many times, I mean, how many times, sometimes the Lord needs to do that with us. And we really need to let him do it. No matter how much it hurts, it's not just for you. It's not just for you. And the sufferings that, that we talk about, take it, you know, consider it joy. It's not for you. For the, for the joy that he beheld was before him, that he endured the cross. Who are we not to just endure some of the sufferings that we go through for the people that are around us in our sphere of influence, for the body of Christ? How many, you know, if we actually desire to do that, and make that our desire to be able to, not, to, to be able to stand in the midst of this stuff and stand and continue to stand and persevere through this stuff that on the other side of this is going to be a, an awesome tsunami of stuff that God is bringing. You know, when, when, when you hear the, the scripture, Arise, shine, for his light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. When, when, I, when I read that scripture, I think, you know, you, you think the sunlight almost, when you're reading the scripture, that the, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, just like the sun is rising. And, it, and, the, and the light comes down and warms your face. When I, when I was reading it this week, it was like, Arise, shine, for his light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen. It's coming up. It's rising because it's in us. He's already given us his glory. We just got to let it out. <laughs> if we clean ourselves up, it will come. 
Um, I don't think I don't know if I could get any, anything else more out of me as far as this, this scripture. If you want to go through First Corinthians ten, I would, I'm more than glad to to read it. But I think I got stuck on the first chapter. We run out of time. We are part of a whole body. Everything we do, even in secret, affects the whole body. Remember that. The next time that you're tempted to come out from his covering by whatever we desire, think about it first. This is not just affecting me. This isn't just me and my sin. This isn't just me and possibly me throwing out my protection, getting bombarded by the Lord. This is possibly affecting my neighbor who had nothing, who did nothing wrong. On the flip side to that, you be the stand-up guy and you chased, you chased a thousand. You come together with your wife and you chased 10,000. It's exponential in both directions. But God doesn't, isn't going to put up with sin in his body. He's always given us a way out, though. Do you have anything? I want to share a little bit about uh, in January. We're going to do something you don't see done in church often enough. We're going to, it's still in the making, but it looks like it's going to be January sometime. We're going we're gonna to teach on how to minister effectively to sexual issues because the, the percentage on pornography, which, by the way, if you're caught up in pornography, it's not innocent. It's adultery. If you're caught up in pornography, you're living in adultery on a regular basis. So uh, we're going to do a seminar, and I think we're putting this together with several other groups, and hopefully we can show you that we've seen every horrific sin there is, I've seen glorious outcome for people that will apply themselves. Matter of fact, our, one of our next books is going to be very helpful in that as well. It's going to be on brain traps, people caught OCD, uh, pornography, just plain old bad habits, how to break them. And if, if the world can do it successfully in some cases, how much more the body of Christ? But I, I want to see everyone have the tools so that they can help somebody. And I've already tested this years ago. I had parents and teenagers in the same room and nobody was embarrassed. Nobody was ashamed because they didn't have to say anything. I was going to give them the tools on how to get free and how to know you're free. But we're, we're living in a day and age when we travel church to church and we were going to start out. I was driving from the Hartford Airport to a church, and we were going to do a, a marriage seminar and uh, sexual. sexual issues. And we started getting uh, some material that the pastor had accumulated questions from the congregation. And when we looked at the questions, we had to backtrack. We cannot teach on how to be set free. We have to first tell them it's wrong. I was shocked. I'm saying it's clear it's in the Bible, but the world has had such an influence and watered these things down to such a degree that, uh, but God, on the back of an envelope, I'm telling you this is going to be good, on the back of an envelope, God gave me a strategy to where people could answer their own questions. What the scripture says, of course, but there's gray areas, and you can actually had a little diagram where the person can look at the diagram and answer their own questions. And it proved to be very beneficial. Uh, we have it, and I think we're going to be doing a joint effort with some school possibly, and I don't know how far along it is in the making, but there's a lot of interest in it from uh, other congregation. And it's in January sometime, but I want to tell you something. Um, what Jason is basically saying is right before he had his experience, he, sp he spoke it, I got it independently as well, that this is now a season where there's an opportunity. This is the last, uh, worst, not last, but the worst time to not deal with your stuff. 
when grace is being made available for it, that's the best time to deal with your stuff. Not condemnation, but to get clean and honest before the Lord. And you, you just can't play with this stuff. And, and when Jason gave that warning, if ever, I can remember when it was, uh, probably it's probably been about two, two and a half months now. He said, if ever you were going to deal with your stuff, do it now. And that's exactly right. Do it now. We have the tools probably better than, than, than most. And I've seen success in every area of, of uh, especially the sexual issues as well as the addiction issues of all sorts. I've seen success, 42 years, I've seen nothing but success. Even as a baby Christian, I was getting results. And it's easy, but it's not for me to do it. It's for us to raise up a company of people who can help other people so that we can minister to the multitudes. I can't counsel people. I'd be busy 24-7 uh, because the need is so great. But I can't equip you to properly do it. But it's, guess where it starts with? You have to be the patient before you're the doctor. If you won't deal with you, what are you giving someone else? And it's, it's so prevalent, it just needs, it needs ministry. But it's, it's epidemic, and people are sweeping it under the rug, and you can't do that anymore. So I think this is a serious time uh, to... But the beautiful part is, I know that I know we have the tools and it works. So really, we're talking about a way of escape, which is actually him. There's an answer for all of this stuff if you want to apply yourself. I always looked at who, who would uh, do the homework. And that's still, to this day, um, the ones that would do the homework and would it be willing to apply themselves. And I just believe that I'm looking forward. There's going to be a beautiful outpouring of God's spirit in the days ahead, but it's going to be, uh, we're going to have clean hands and a pure heart. Yes. And we're not going to be able to just dismiss a lot of topics because it's not, uh, I like kicking people out. I am the opposite of seeker friendly. <laughs> I try to be friendly, but I'm not looking to water down the gospel for numbers. I do not care about numbers. I care about changed lives. And I've seen changed lives since I was a baby Christian, and I'm going to continue to do that. So, uh, and by the way, husbands and wives, we carry in an anointing for 42 years. I've seen the same thing. If the man is not good to his wife, he will leave or change. I've watched it for 42 years. They will leave or they will change. I prefer you change. <laughs> Wives, if you're not good to your husbands and you have the tools to change, you will leave or you will change. And if you don't want to change, I just assume you did leave. Because I can't, we can't help you. We only have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. <laughs> and if those aren't good enough tools for you, then you want some other alternative. It's not going to happen. I want you to be that unnamed company. I have 7,000 that have not bowed their knee. I have many people in this city. I want to be one of the many people, don't you? Yes. I want to be the ones numbered by God himself who knows even if they're not named, I know who they are. I've watched that for 42 years, and it's not changed. It's only going to get better. If you're really serious about a relationship with God, you're going to grow. If you're kind of wishy-washy, you can go somewhere else and hide and pretend and play church. You want the reality? It'll require transformation and opening up to God. Did we scare him good, Jesse? <laughs> you're going to like next week better when I'm preaching. I'm not as hard. <laughs> no. Somebody told me that, oh, it was uh, one of our friends. Boy, I'm praying with Jason was really rough. I really like your father a lot better. <laughs> 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 I see the necessity of, of truth and love. And, and when there's a correction, when he corrects us, it's not necessarily feels good sometimes. But, but you know, I wanted, I, I just wrote down a few things that, that he actually, because of, of, of who he is and what a good father he is, 
of some of the things that, that he has promised us in the scriptures. I just want to, I just want to share you this little, this little list. He's promised us his divine nature, his unselfish character in us, his unconditional love and forgiveness, his joy, his peace beyond description, his supernatural power, well-being, health, safety and stability, his divine wisdom, knowledge, understanding, ingenuity, his keen insight and creativity. And that is just a really tiny bit of what he's promised us as a son and a daughter that we are called for. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's a good father. Amen. All right, so we're going to get cleaned up here before you leave. And the two most discerning people I know is myself and Jason. So we're going to scan you <laughs> to make sure that you're clean on the inside. <laughs> so Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we, we welcome a, a, a season of repentance because it comes from the hum, it comes from the grace of God and God gives grace to the humble and we can't even repent without your spirit. We are totally helpless without you. And we're asking for that cleansing work and that supernatural work of washing us clean on the inside. For the days ahead are going to be going to be marked with your splendor and your glory and your grace. But your grace is given to the humble and we need no longer making excuses, but we enter into the cleansing power of God for the days ahead that my heart and my attitude be right. And we said a long time ago, here's the thing that will stand out. You will we will teach you how to deal with your sin, deal with your issues and die to an agenda. An agenda is idolatry. The church is not a platform for you to promote yourself. That's an agenda and it's idolatry. It's covetousness. Covetousness is idolatry as it says. So Father in the name of the Lord Jesus I want to love other people and, be, and serve other people in the body of Christ because we are individually members of one another. And so Father we want to we want to be that blessing and that healing that if the toe hurts, we not, only have, we not only have the remedy for how to bring that toe healing rather than just recognizing that it's in pain. So Father, we just release it. In Jesus' name, we release that healing virtue. In Jesus' name, amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the Spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.